The LEGO Titanic is over 9000 pieces and while failing to become the biggest LEGO set of all time since unfortunately that ship has sailed, it is as of today one of the most impressive models LEGO has ever made. It is a perfect replica of the RMS Titanic, one of the most iconic and well-known ships of the world due to the unfortunate circumstances of its maiden voyage and back then it was the largest and most luxurious ship ever made. Everything about this model is big and it starts with the box. I have never held the Colosseum or the UCS Millennium Falcon boxes, some of the biggest ones LEGO has ever made so I can't really compare it, but this thing is huge, weights about 14 kilos and makes standard LEGO boxes look completely ridiculous. Here it is next to the FC Barcelona Stadium box, a set with almost half the piece count and yet it still manages to be more than double the size. LEGO has chosen beautiful shots of the model to place on all sides of the box and on the back there's hints at some of the details the set has to offer when built. Inside the packaging keeps the premium treatment where we get to see a blueprint style of decoration in one of the flaps and inside three separate boxes each of them corresponding to a different section of the ship. In these individual boxes the schematics blueprint style of decoration is still there with each box having a front and back view of the ship's section it contains inside and when placed next to the others combined into bigger schematic blueprint styled images. Each of the boxes contain the corresponding numbered bags of pieces and the instructions booklet. Now let's talk about the model. At 1.3 meters is the longest Lego set ever made and with 9090 pieces becomes the second biggest LEGO set of all time when it comes down to the piece count. The first place still taken by the world map with over 11,000 pieces. When looking at this the feeling I have is that I'm looking at one of those highly detailed model kits people assemble because of the perfect use of string elements, all the micro scale details of the deck and the overall shape of the ship. Like for real, we're talking about LEGO right? A square based system? But then there's the curves and smooth transitions, parts of the build at weird angles, hardly any gaps at all considering what I've just said before and while building this all I could think was how in the world is it possible to make this with lego pieces? First of all the color choices are beautiful, the dark red of the hull topped by black and the plate layer of bright light orange that goes all across the ship looks really nice. At the bow however this was done using prints as it would otherwise be impossible to do with just bricks. The top part of the ship's hull is mostly white while all of the deck is tan and the funnels look really nice with a combination of bright light orange with black. When making Making this review I compared the model with blueprints of Titanic and I have to say most of the details are spot on and right where they should be. The bow of the ship features its name with printed tiles and next to it we can see the anchors, three in total brilliantly made with a Lego sausage element. The pilot jack flag is made with a plastic type of material, there's also the forward anchor crane and as is the case with most of the ship a lot of the railings are represented by bar elements clipped to the deck. The well deck has two of the six cargo cranes of the ship and two cargo hatches. The cranes can be moved so you can kinda imagine Titanic being loaded before starting a trip. I really like the use of these detailed slopes on their side to represent stairs people would use to go from one deck to another and finally in this section there's the forward mast complete with the crow's nest and topped by the US flag. While researching for this review I found out that the US flag at the time only had 46 stars so as a test of the model accuracy I went on and zoomed all the way in to count them and guess what I found? 46 stars. Well done LEGO. Here we can see the bridge of the ship from where Titanic was steered, some of the lifeboats and the davits used to lower them to the water and up here some air vents. I really like these ones here as they were made with the classic telephone element recolored in white with only half of it showing over the deck. The angled funnels are probably one of the most iconic things of Titanic and in here that's also true. They're locked in place quite well even at this weird angle and the use of the string elements really highlight the model kit feel of the set. Throughout the build we're given in the building instructions small facts about the Titanic so in a way it also becomes a learning experience and a way of really understanding the parts of the ship we're building. Like this one for instance, did you know that the Titanic had four funnels but only three of them were functional and the fourth was just there for aesthetic purposes? On the bigger section of the hull we can see the portholes down here and several different types of windows and decks passengers from different classes used while traveling. And up here some micro scale wooden seats and more of the areas accessed with the use of the slope stairs element as well as a different combination of bar elements to achieve even more detailed railings. At the stern of the ship we have similar builds for the cargo cranes and hatches, stairs, railings and stern mast. There's also the representation of the docking bridge and the Technic gear here is actually used to adjust the tension of the string elements between masts, which otherwise would be down. The last flag is the blue ensign to identify the ship's nationality and back here is a printed slope reading Titanic and Liverpool, the city where the ship was registered. Down here we have the rudder that can be moved as well as the three 
three propellers. These are connected to drive shafts that go all the way inside the ship. And why is that, you might ask? Well, I was actually scared about the fact the model was this big as it could prove to be a boring build, especially when you look at the main section of the hull. It almost looks the inside is just a boring structure to support the outside details. But guess again, by removing these two locks, the LEGO Titanic can be split into three different sections that show highly detailed cross sections of the ship. In the bow section we can see the engine furnaces, one of the two grand staircases the ship had, and several cabins where I feel beds were made with the use of regular white tiles. The very thin walls were achieved with the use of car door elements and there's also a pool and some sort of dining area at the top. The middle section has brick built coal bunkers, I really like how the swimming pool matches the exact location of the swimming pool in the bow section and there's a few more cabins and rooms here. The way the locks are done is very seamless and you don't even notice it when the ship is in one piece. The build is done in such a sturdy way that when locked you can easily transport this 9000 piece lego model around without the fear of anything falling apart, which isn't often the case with big lego models such as this. When unlocking the stern section we finally find one of the coolest aspects of the model the two main piston engines that actually work and are connected to the port and starboard screws. Now if you want to take a closer look at the engines and how the engine crankshafts and pistons work, they can actually be easily removed from its place. It is a shame that there isn't a way to make the propellers turn remotely while the ship is in one piece, and I feel that there was a missed opportunity in trying to do the same for the main propeller, having a knob somewhere to also turn it. I also feel there's enough space inside the whole structure where some links could be done to have all the propellers work in sync. One thing that I I really liked while building this set is that somewhere in here there's the representation of the electrical engine that is connected to the central propeller. After you build the whole thing you will never see it again, as it isn't accessible but you know it's there and you know it's connected to the central propeller. How cool is that for model accuracy? Finally the whole model rests on top of six supports, further giving this the feel of a kit model, complete with the ship's nameplate. I actually dislike it however, it was done using the letter prints from the LEGO IDS typewriter and in a way feels like the thought was, oh we have these letters might as well I'll just use them, instead of actually thinking of a more proper way of displaying the name like you would see on model kits, an all black nameplate of some sort. But hey, at this point of the review this has been my only complaint about the model so you can kinda see where I'm going with this. It is an amazing model overall, not only due to the level of detail and care while designing it, but also the building experience which for me is what makes a lego set phenomenal. You would think that at over 9000 pieces the set would be a pain or boring to build, but it actually wasn't. At all. Sure, there are some boring moments of the build where you need to build a lot of these porthole builds, and these window sections are very repetitive when you've built a couple already, but those moments are easily forgotten once you get to the juicy parts of the build. Right at the start, the bow section of the build is like a masterclass of LEGO triangles and engineering. A few steps in and I was sure this was a Mike Psyche build, my favorite LEGO model designer and a mastermind at finding clever and unexpected building connections. The way these sections fit together so nicely in a seamless way and how good the clicking sounds feel when everything is finally connected is super satisfying. The way the funnels go perfectly at an angle to be locked in place by pushing the Technic bushes is another of such examples, even the simple microscale wooden seats being flushed down the deck and clicked into place, or in the back where in the bow section the white hole wraps around the deck so perfectly. Speaking of the deck, there's lots of places where the angles would make you think it would not be possible to hide gaps away, but then there's countless examples of how that isn't true at all. I mean... The LEGO Titanic has easily become my favorite LEGO set of all time. Maybe due to nostalgia by having watched the movie countless times as a kid, falling in love with the ship and now having a set made of that, surely for the fact that this has been one of the best building experiences I have ever had, which completely caught me off guard, as I always thought that due to the size of the model it would be a boring and repetitive build, and finally because I feel personally attached to this model, as in 2019 while still working for LEGO I had pitched and made a concept model of a LEGO Titanic idea to the creator expert team. When I first started hearing the rumors about the Titanic, I was really excited about it, and while I would never be able to claim any involvement on the set, I was at least really happy that people actually found it to be a good idea to turn into a LEGO set. But then I got sent a review copy of the LEGO set by LEGO, thank you LEGO by the way, and then I started building it. And then this happened. Oh my god, I'm just building this and look at this, look at it, focus please. It is the TC Tombstone. On the Titanic, where is it? Come on, come on. Oh. My. God. <laughs> I cannot believe this. Why is this?
So yeah, long story short, in 2018 I designed a ship in a bottle set in which I included the tile with my initials, TC. In 2019 I left LEGO for personal reasons and in 2020 the Haunted House set was launched which included mentions to my name in the form of the organ of Katarinu, a part of the design which I only gave spoken feedback on, and a TC tombstone on the Haunted House graveyard resembling the font style of the ship in a bottle tile and in a way a super cool way of my former colleagues remembering me as Tiago Katarinu, the LEGO designer who in a way died for having left LEGO. Now I'm assuming my pitch of the Titanic to LEGO back in 2019 must have had some sort of significance in turning the idea into an actual LEGO set two years later and for that reason the TC tile was used once again and I personally think that's like the greatest easter egg ever on a LEGO set. Am I being biased in calling the LEGO Titanic the best LEGO set ever? Probably, to some degree, but that still doesn't change my mind. It's an amazing looking model, an amazing building experience with lots of attention to detail that from a distance hardly looks like LEGO at all, which is like the best way of complementing something built out of lego bricks. One issue with the set though is the price. It will retail for 630 euros or US dollars and it will be available to pre-order November 1st. When it comes down to the price per piece ratio it's actually a very good lego deal. It's just that it might be hard to justify paying this price in one go for a single lego model. Good luck trying to convince your partners if you live with someone else. You can show them this review if it helps though. The way the build is done by being split in three different boxes with each of them containing their own set of numbered bags, booklets instructions and even a brick separator per box make this a great model to be building with someone else. Another thing to consider is that this thing is huge. At little over 1.3 meters this is the longest lego set of all time and if you're considering getting it make sure you have the space to display it. With a set this big there's lots of interesting elements worth mentioning like the dark red slopes used on the ship's hull, lots of dark red brackets, a ton of the newer 2x6 tiles in dark red, a sea plate, bright light orange lightsaber hilts and bars, a few of these new slopes in white and reddish brown, this black round brick of the funnels and lots of the new 1x5 plates in tan. The longest LEGO set ever deserves the longest LEGO review I've ever made and if you've enjoyed it please drop a like and be sure to subscribe if you'd wish to see more like this. I put a lot of effort off camera into making these video reviews the best pieces of content I can possibly make and subscribing together with some comments on the video are the best signs of support you could possibly show me. Have an awesome day and I will see you on the next one.